Hi everyone. Welcome to the class. Good morning. So today we are just going to start the class with the concept of capacitor and its capacitance. Okay. So at first let me just give the heading. Capacitor. Today we'll just understand that what is capacitor and what is the mathematical formula that we can represent a capacitor. What is its use and why we are studying this. Right. Now, as per the name, what do you mean by that? Capacitor. So, obviously, it should have some capacity. But what kind of capacity? Why that this device can hold some water? Or it can hold some food? What? Capacitor is a one type of device that can hold some charges for very small amount of time. Right? Now, if the language is a problem, everyone, uh, yesterday, whenever I just made a video, I just realized that uh, the language English is a problem. Now, if it is a problem, then you can share with me. I can use I can use the Hindi as well. Okay. Now, the thing is that you have to understand the concept, thus so you can apply this whenever you are just solving the questions. You are just uh, applying this concept at some other place. So, coming back to the chapter, what is a capacitor? Capacitor is a one type of device which can hold some charges for a very small amount of time. Maximum time what happens? We just use the capacitor that is of in 1 microfarad,ay 2 microfarad,ay 3 microfarad,ay. Actually, farad,ay is the unit of capacitor. Okay. Now, till that time that white port not comes, so we have to continue with this green board now. So that's why I'm just continuing with that. Okay. Now in the concept of capacitor, whenever you are just going to understand that, so you have to understand the more two things. First one is a conductor. What is a conductor and what is an insulator? Now everyone knows that. You will say, sir, what the question you are just asking? Conductor, we know very well. Insulator. We also know conductor that means through which the electricity can pass easily and insulator is a one type of material through which the electricity cannot pass. Okay, we know this thing. But why the electricity passes easily through the conductor? That's the reason. Because in this chapter, you again will study about the charges. How much charges a device can hold. So you have to know that how a conductor works, how an insulator works. Right. Now, in a conductor, if we just draw a cross-sectional area of a conductor, very small portion of a conductor look like this. Okay. There is a cross-sectional area of a conductor. So, in the conductor, it is made up of copper, aluminium, silver, right? Maximum time we use the copper. And in the case of lightning arista, sometimes we use the iron as well. Okay. Now, if you know about the lightning arrestor, just uh, tell me in the WhatsApp group. Okay. I just want to see that how many people know about the lightning arrestor and its function as well. Okay. So, what is a conductor? That in a conductor, as it is a metal, so obviously it should have some free electrons. Right. There are a lot of free electrons are there inside the conductor. Now, the question is, sir, why there are a lot of free electrons? In the case of insulator, if there were some free electrons, so the insulator also can conduct some electricity. But insulator cannot conduct electricity. The reason is that insulator does not have any free electrons. Now, in a conductor, if I am talking about of any metal, suppose the most common metal that is of copper, I am just taking. And the copper is having an atomic number that is of 29, right? So now we'll study some chemistry as well. So we are just going to find out the electronic configuration of copper. So according to Bohr atomic model, we know that in the k orbit, the number of ma the maximum number of electrons that is of two. That is of in the l orbit, the maximum number of electrons is eight. In the m orbit, the maximum number of electrons is eighteen. So how much? Eighteen, eight, twenty-six, and twen twenty-eight. So, in the last orbit that I am talking about in the n orbit, 
the number of electrons that is of 1. So you can see that in the last orbit or in the outermost orbit, the number of electrons present for the case of copper that is of 1. So if I just draw the diagram, I am not able to draw 18 electrons in the m orbit. Okay, I am just drawing the model thus you can understand this concept. This is my k orbit. This is my L orbit, this is my M orbit and the last one is N orbit. So for example, I am just drawing some of the electrons. In the L orbit, I can draw 8 electrons but in the M orbit, it is very much impossible. 18 electrons, very small, small number of electrons I have to draw. So I am just drawing some of them, okay. But in the last orbit, only one electron is present. So what I am just going to tell you that the electrostatic force of attraction between the nucleus and the electrons will be very much less for the case of outermost orbit. Look at the outermost orbit, the electrostatic force of attraction will be very less, no? So the outermost orbit electron will just leave the orbit and the copper will get positively charged and it will produce copper ion okay so whenever it is producing the copper ion suppose one electron left the orbit so it is producing cu plus ion okay so there are a lot of cu plus ions will be produced because we are discussing about one atomic configuration and in a conductor, there are a lot of millions of copper ions are present. So there are a lot of free electrons are present in the case of copper. That thing I am just going to discuss. And what about the Cu plus ion? The positively charged ion that is being produced that will be bounded with the copper. Okay, it will not able to move. Positive charges never move in the case of conductor or in the case of insulator. They are just bounded with the lattice. Only the electrons that has left the outermost orbit of that particular atom, that electrons only conduct the electricity. Okay, in the current electricity chapter, we'll just discuss about two kind of electricity. Okay, that means two kind of current you can say. One is electronic current, another is conventional current. Okay, let me just tell about that one. Actually, what we know, if this is a battery, so this is a positive terminal, this is a negative terminal. We know that positive terminal is at a higher potential, negative terminal is at a lower potential and due to their potential difference, the current starts flowing. But actually, the number of electrons in the negative terminal is greater. So, actually, the electrons are flowing from the negative terminal towards the positive terminal. This is known as electronic current. If we just draw a simple circuit, it will be very much helpful for you to understand. So this is a simple circuit we have just drawn. Now this is an open circuit. Whenever you will just close that circuit, then the electrons will start flowing from the negative terminal towards the positive terminal like that. Throughout the circuit, the, all of the electrons will flow like that. But we don't assume that direction. We know that the positive terminal is at higher potential, negative terminal is at a lower potential. So our conventional current, conventional current direction is assumed to flow from positive terminal to negative terminal. Now whatever the arrow that I have given, that represents the direction of conventional current. But actually the current flows from the negative terminal of a battery towards the positive terminal of a battery throughout the circuit. Okay. Now, I hope up to that point it is clear that uh, only the electrons are those who are just flowing through a conductor. Right. So, the more number of free electrons you will have, the, the best conductor you will have. Now, in the case of copper, the number of free electrons are less, though we are using the copper because it is having some other properties, the ductility of the wire, now its cost and other things also matter. Now, for the case of silver, the number of free electrons are greater than of copper. So, we can say that silver obviously is a good conductor than copper, right? Now, in the case of insulator, what happens? 
in the case of insulator if you just draw the cross sectional area so in that case now all of the lattice for the case of insulator they are just tightly bounded with each other and there is no space that there may exist some free electron that the free electrons can flow because in the case of insulator the free electrons are not available so though you are supplying the free electrons by some external battery or some other power supply they will not able to full flow through the insulator because they are tightly bounded there is no path to flow that's why there is the common difference between the conductor and insulator okay lot of fundamental lot of lectures i have just given now ah, physics teachers have it that's why okay now capacitor i'm just giving the heading again because i'm just coming back to the core topic of this chapter as i have already told you that capacitor is one type of device that can hold the charges for a very small amount of time then we will say sir our phone is having the battery so we can say that the battery is a one type of capacitor no obviously not the battery can hold the charges for very long amount of time if i charge my phone it will uh, it will be in standby mode for two days or three days right so the battery can hold the charges for a very long amount of time but the capacitor cannot hold the charges for that much of time because in the case of battery there is an electrolyte is present no? in the electrolyte there are a lot of positive ions there are a lot of negative ions are being produced and due to the presence of ions only the battery is able to hold some charges but in the case of capacitor what happens in the case of capacitor actually if you look at the diagram of the capacitor now this is the small diagram that i am draw, uh, drawing over here don't focus on my drawing because it is too bad just understand the concept in the case of capacitor what happens there are the two parallel plates are uh, placed inside of the capacitor okay and in between of the plates it is filled with a dielectric medium okay it is filled with a dielectric medium what is a dielectric medium dielectric medium that is a one type of insulator through which the charged particles cannot flow that means dielectric is not a conductor okay but why we are using an insulator type material inside of a capacitor because the dielectric material can transfer the charges from one plate to another plate that's why we are just using the dielectric material inside of a capacitor later we will study that in the case of dielectric also some electric field can be induced on its outer surface okay that means now later we will study that for the case of dielectric some electric field can be produced also we will discuss it later but now we are focusing that in this capacitor okay in this capacitor if it can hold q amount of charges whenever it is able to hold some amount of charges obviously it should have some potential right whenever an object is having some potential it can do some work and for the case of charges for the case of electricity we can say that if a substance is having some potential it can deliver some charges right so if the capacitor now in this device if it is said that it can hold q amount of charges so obviously it potential get raised to v right whenever it is holding q amount of charges its potential is raised from zero to v so we can say more charge it can hold more the potential will be so that charge is a directly proportional to the potential so whenever the proportionality sign will be converted to equal sign there uh, t will be introduced and c is known as capacitance okay so we can say that q is equals to c into v this is the basic formula of this chapter that means the amount of charges that can be held by a capacitor 
is a directly proportional to its potential. More the charge it can hold, more the potential will be. Now this formula can be represented in other ways also. Q equals to CV, first formula. Second formula, C equals to Q by V and V equals to Q by C. This is the formula number 1, formula number 2, formula number 3. Okay. Up to that point, whether it is clear? I think it is clear now. Now, what is the unit of capacitor? Now, C is equals to Q by of V. What is the unit of charge? The SI unit of charge is Coulomb, right? And the unit of potential, that is a volt. So, the unit of capacitance, that is a Coulomb per volt. And actually, by the name of Michael Faraday, it is given as Faraday, okay? So, the SI unit of capacitance is Faraday. Actually, one Faraday capacitor is equal to the size of the room, that means the classroom of your school. A big size capacitor, one Faraday. And it is not available in India. Okay, one Faraday capacitor is, making of one Faraday capacitor is too much costly. So, that's why you are not making that one. For the electronic circuits, for some electrical circuits, we are just using some microfarad capacitor. Every time you will just see that two microfarad capacitor, five microfarad capacitor, all of the calculations will be in microfarad. Okay. I hope up to that time everything is clear. If you are having any of the question, any of the doubt, you can just give me a reply. Actually, you guys are not replying over the group also. So, that's a request to you people that you guys can reply whatever the things. Now, be frank. Now, if you are not understanding the concept, say clearly, sir, whatever the concept that is relevant by you, that is not understandable. Okay. Actually, I just want to know that how much you guys are understanding. That's very much important instead of delivering this lectures. Okay. So, be frank and say whether you are understanding or not. Now, we are just going to find out the capacitance for a spherical capacitor. Now, for a spherical capacitor, we have to find out the capacitance. Okay. Now, for the case of spherical capacitor, at first we should make the diagram, right? Now, the spherical capacitor looks like a shape like that. Okay, and if we just given a charge of Q on its outer surface, then the all of the charges will exist in the outer surface. Now, we have to find out uh, the capacitance of this spherical capacitor. Now, in this case, we'll just find out that uh, how much charge can be hold by this spherical capacitor. Now, have you seen that? Masur dal. Now, now whatever the shape of a Masur dal is, the same color, same type of the spherical capacitor looks. Okay. Actually, it is used in the electrical and electronic circuit and it looks like one Masur dal. Okay. Now, in that case, this is the center. Sorry. This is the center. We can see that this is my point O. And if there are some charges exist on the outer surface and we have given a charge of Q, so we can say that there should be some electric potential, right, on the surface. And the radius of the sphere that we are assuming as R, R for radius, it will be very much easy to remember. Now, at the surface, there must be some potential that exists, right. Now, what is the formula for potential, electric potential? Now, electric potential at the surface of a spherical conductor that is represented by V and it is equals to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught, that is of Q by of R. Okay, we know that formula. Now, in this case, what will be the capacitance? How much charges can be hold by this spherical capacitor? How to find out that? We should use some formula, 
right? We are just going to find out the capacitance, right? So C equals to Q by V. That formula I should apply. So if I just substitute the value of electric potential over here, so that will be of Q divided by 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught, that is of Q by of R. So the Q is getting cancelled out and we are just getting that 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by of R. So this is the expression of capacitance for the case of spherical capacitance. So up to that point, we have just finished, we have just completed that session. We are not uh, give you a lot of pressure. If you want more videos, then you just say in the group, then I will move. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. Keep learning.